Okay, so tonight, Be'ezrus Hashem, we're going to be continuing our series of Shirim on entering into the Sea of Wisdom based on the teachings of the Tzaddik and the Gon of Yitzchak Meyer Morgenstern Shlita. And what we're going to be looking at from amongst the 115 pages of this week's printouts is going to be the Biurim on Mesech Sukkah, the Dafyomi Shirim that the Rebbe gives. Because it focuses on a particular theme, which is something we've been focusing on in a very clear and almost unprecedented way in the fact that the Rebbe is going to bring us through different layers of Torah thought, analyzing the same idea. But to begin with, the Nakuda, the essential point of this teaching, is something that we've discussed in the past from the Rebbe. But it's something that deserves review. It's something that deserves review daily, hourly, because it's fundamental to the essence of what it means to serve Hashem in this world, what it means to be a Jew in this world. Especially on Rosh Chodesh Elu, when so many of us are filled with certain misleading platitudes about what the nature of tshuva is and what the nature of being a human being is. And herein lies what I believe to be the therapeutic value of the Rebbe's Torah. But the Tzaddik's Torah itself is not simply novel in its comprehension, both vertically and horizontally, but rather in terms of depth, what the Rebbe is being Megala is obviously something that has always been present in the other Tzaddikim, in the Yechidi HaDoros, in the Tzaddikim HaAmitim, from all of the Doros HaKoidmim. What the Rebbe does is he shows it over and over and over again to the extent that when you're learning Torah from the tzaddikim after learning the Rebbe's Torah, it's hard to see whether you're reading what the tzaddikim are saying or whether you're reading what you learned from the Rebbe. Because the Rebbe's Torah is Megala the Mafreya, what all of the tzaddikim are saying. That when you learn the tzaddikim afterwards, you see that the way the Rebbe is being Mazber, these Nikudos, is Mamish, the very Nikuda that the tzaddikim Ha'amitim were trying to point out. Now, the Nakuda that we're going to point out is going to be that at the end of the day, no matter how high a person goes on the rungs of spiritual development, no matter how lofty a person is in their spiritual quest, at the end of the day, we will never be able to lay claim to reaching the limit, to reaching the apex that no matter how refined we become, no matter how perfect our midos are, a human being can never reach the infinite. Not because we're not good enough, not because we're not capable of becoming perfect because of some flaw within ourselves, but rather the very precondition of what it means to be a human being is to recognize that there will be an infinite distance between Hashem, and us as human beings. Yes, we can reach lofty heights. Yes, we can ascend on the ladder of spiritual growth and reach the ceiling. But in the end of the day, the ceiling that we have reached is ultimately going to be revealed to be the ground floor of the next level. Why is this so? There are a number of halachos, essential halachos within Panimi Satora that demand that this be so. On the one hand, the prerequisite that we need to understand is that that my holiness, says God, is above and beyond your holiness. That no matter how holy and refined an individual becomes, a human being becomes, the holiness of God, the transcendence of God, of Atzmusa Yisbarach, is infinitely removed from us, is removed beyond us. It's a level above. No matter how high we go, Klape, wherever we're at, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to be a level above us. Again, like we said, that the ceiling becomes the floor, that the Shar Hanun, the 50th gate, the apex of our spiritual understanding, opens itself up not to be the end of the road, but rather to be the beginning of another 50 gates. And that so the perfection that we encountered in our lives is simply the perfection of a limited level which opens up onto another level of infinite progress. 
The reason for this is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is so beyond the confines of our awareness that it's impossible to claim that we can ever arrive at a point where we can say that we and Hashem are at the same level. To arrive at a point where we and Hashem are on the same level, God forbid, is to claim that we have some sort of grasp of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To claim that we have some sort of grasp of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is to claim that on a certain level we operate on an equal playing field to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is tantamount to foreign worship, which is tantamount to minimizing HaKadosh Baruch Hu to a measurable, minimized form of something that we can grasp. So it is of the essence to recognize that no matter how lofty we climb, there will always be an infinite distance between us and God, so to speak. And this is true, as the Rebbe points out in the name of all of the tzaddikim, even after Mashiach arrives, that as the Rashash and as the Taurus Chacham and all of the tzaddikim point out, the culmination of the 6,000 year period of our experience in history, which ends with redemption and Mashiach, is the perfection of one level, but it's a perfection of one level that opens up onto the imperfection of a level that is above and beyond it. This is the secret of Erchen, of relativity, that teaches us that each and every point of spiritual experience is seen as deficient until it becomes whole. But in relation to that which is above it, it's still going to be deficient. That is our job to recognize ourselves as Bali Chisaron. Chisaron lack is not a failure of our inability to reach God, but rather it is the precondition, is the mala of the chisaron, is the recognition that we will always be yearning towards a higher level. What the Rebbe is going to point out, that this is clear on both the level of Musr, on the level of Chassidus, and on the level of Kabbalah. Now the Rebbe doesn't say this, but it's possible to align those three levels to the typical triadic breakdown, the three-part breakdown of the Meichen we typically describe. Musr, or self-reflection, analyzing the self. That's the Meich of Bina, that's the left brain that sees distinction and separation. It's the Meich of Tshuva that pushes us to become better and better, like the Bali Musr, Rav Yisrael Salanter, Rav Yitzhak Blazer, all of the tzaddikim pointed out to us. Kabbalah, the Kabbalah of the Arizal is going to be the Mayach of Chachma. It's going to be the Mayach that sees everything as unified, everything as whole. And then Chassid, this is going to be the Mayach of Keser, the Gilu of the Bashem Tov HaKadosh, and that light of the Tzadikim HaMitim teaches us how to see things in a different way. Now what the Rebbe is going to show is how this Nikuda, this impossibility of reaching the essence, is true, and it's going to be expressed in three different ways. And part of what this teaching is going to be is going to be looking at a teaching from Rav Dessler, which the Rebbe does quote from time to time. It's not common that the Rebbe quotes from the Bali Musr, but ultimately Rav Dessler amongst the Bali Musr is the one that the Rebbe quotes most often. And the other two Makoros we're going to see are not going to be direct quotes, but rather they're going to be implied teachings and truths that emerge from the Rebbe's teaching. Now again, this is a teaching that's coming to explain a Gemara on Dafei Amar Aleph in Masech Sukkah, which tells us that the Shechina, HaKadoshah, is never yored lamata me'asar tvachim. And the Rebbe engages in the conversation afterwards with regards to Hanukkah and how that's not a stira, which ultimately, if we had the time, we would look at that as well. But again, to keep the teachings concise, to give us a bite-sized piece of information, we're going to simply look at this inyan. So the Rebbe says as follows, Bir ha'inyan belasha in ha'musr ha'chasidus v'akabala. The explanation of the fact that a human being, no matter how lofty they rise on the spiritual quest, will ultimately always come to the place of tachlis ha'yadiyah shaloneida, that the apex is to come to the recognition that all that I know is that I know absolutely nothing, and that all that I've grasped simply leads me to the point that I recognize the ungraspability of that which remains above me. V'ha'inyin v'ha'inu the Shechina, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence, our awareness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, does not descend below Asar Tvachim. It does not descend into human graspability. And so too, when it comes to Moshe and Eliyahu, they did not ascend to Shemayim. This is something we saw and we quoted in the name of the Leshem Shemayim Vachalema before, that it's specifically by Moshe Rabbeinu that we learn the halacha of Lo Yirenu HaAdam Vachai that no human being can see me and live. Why? Because it's not a symptom of human imperfection, but rather it is a constitutive element of what it means to be a human being. 
that I am imperfect, therefore I am. If it was about human fallibility or failure, then Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have fallen into that because Moshe was perfect. But, Zok the Leshem, that even the most perfect of all human beings who could perfect themselves in all models of perfection ultimately was imperfect, klape the perfectibility of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Even Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't reach the Etzem because it's impossible. The Lashon of the Leshem in Deya Chelek Beis is that ki choku me chuke habriya, that it is a law built into the laws of creation, that the creation cannot grasp the creator. But rather, even Moshe and Eliyahu, no matter how lofty they ascended, they only reached a little bit below Asat Tfachim and Shemayim. And look, the Rebbe says, Rev Eliyahu Desler me Eliyahu. Now this is a rarity for the Rebbe, telling us to look explicitly at a teaching. Rav Dessler says as follows in the fourth chilek of Mirtev Minayohu on page 74. <coughs> this explanation is explained in the words of the Bali Musr. That it is impossible for any creation, no matter how lofty or ascendant they are, to fully reach the level, the spiritual level referred to as Shemayim. But nevertheless, there's a certain touching between them, but there's going to be a distance at the end of the day. Rav Dessler says, We must know that there is an essential distance and distinction between the creation and the creator, even when we reach the apex, the highest possible level of what a human being can reach, they are all considered as nothing completely in the eyes of the true essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Umasha Amru Razal, and that which Chazal told us that even Moshe and Eliyahu were not capable of ascending above ten Tfachim, they weren't able to leave this worldliness and enter into Shemayim. Hainu Bebuchinas Hasaga, it means that they couldn't grasp it. Umasha Amru Ishtarchev Kisei Ad Asara Venaket Bei Hainu Shakisei Akavod Bebuchinas Hadveikos Sanavshis Im Oiches Ba Harei Zeichel Bebuchinas Shemayim Shemoyrid Hashem Gam LeToichal Amenu Hashafel. And Rav Dessler says, ah, but we see that there's an idea of kise hakavod, which is drawing down Shemayim into the Aretz. So Rav Dessler says, that's not a hasaga of the essence, but rather that is the gift that HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals, that he reveals himself on a certain level to us where we're at. But even if you're Moshe and even if you're Eliyahu, you can never truly reach perfection because perfection is a human impossibility. Now, again, Rav Dessler spent time with Bali Hasidus. Rav Dessler, the first drasha that Rav Dessler gave, and we spoke about this before, Rav Dessler, when he came to Panovich in front of that famous golden iron Kodesh, the first drasha he gave was the Torah of Rav Tzadik on Shimshon HaTzadik, on Shimshon. And anybody who knows Rav Tzadik's Torah on Shimshon understands how far, at least externally, that is from what the yeshiva of Panovich was about. But nevertheless, this was the derech of Rav Dessler. Rav Dessler was mislabesh the words of our tzaddikim, the words of the Bali Hasidus and the Bali Kabbalah within the Lashonos of Musser and Haskal. Now, Rav Dessler amongst the Bali Musser was open to quoting Rabbi Nachman. And Rav Dessler also writes in the third volume of Mirtav Meliahu when discussing the sugya of Tzimtzum and discussing the concept of the machloika, so to speak, between the Balatanya and the Nafshachayim. Rav Dessler writes in a footnote that he studied these teachings with Rav Itchemeyer de Masmid, who was known as a chassid or a, a mashpia. I believe he was a Talmud of the Rebbe Rashab as well as the Rebbe Rayatz. And Rav Dessler writes as follows. He says that the greatest spiritual bliss of his entire life was this time period where he was studying these ideas. So again, the fact that Rav Dessler is explaining something so profoundly rooted in the teachings of Hasidus and in Kabbalah is not such a chiddish to those who learn Rav Dessler. The Rebbe continues and he says, Ubir devar of Belashon Hasidus. What does it mean to understand what Rav Dessler is saying, Adarach Hasidus? It means as follows. She'aliyah lemarom hu asod shel hasaga shara hamishim. And what it means to ascend to the apex is to grasp the 50th gate. 
Chazal tells us that a Kaddish Baruch who created 50 gates of Bina, 50 gates of human understanding, 50 places within ourselves that we have to open up in terms of coming closer to and grasping a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And the Gemara tells us that, what? That mem te, that nun shari bina nisnu l'may shara chaser achas. That Moshe Rabbeinu received 50 lacking one. So what does this mean? It means shatekev kishamasigim shara chamishim. When a person comes to grasp the Shara Hamishim, which again, Lufia Niyastaiti explains the Lashon of Chazal, that the Hasoga of Shara Hamishim is Chasar Achas. Chazal could have said that Moshe Rabbeinu only grasped 49 gates. Why do Chazal say that Moshe grasped 50 gates, Chasar Achas? Because for MS, the 50th gate is the Hakara of what? Of Chasar Achas, that I'm lacking something that I will always be lacking. So when a person reaches that 50th gate, when a person reaches what they feel is perfection, niftach oid mem 49 new gates open up in front of them. It turns out that there will always already be the recognition that I have not yet reached the true 50th gate because every time I reach the 50th gate, I come to realize that there's another 49 gates in front of me. And this is ad ein sof. There's no end to this. There will never be a point in history where a human being is capable of laying claim to grasping HaKadosh Baruch Hu B'chvaydu Uv'atzmo. This goes from the sixth generation to the sixth millennia, to the seventh millennia, to the eighth millennia, to the ninth and to the tenth, until finally human beings can no longer express themselves as the Ramchal and the Bris and the Leshem point out. It's not that we grasp it, it's just that we can no longer even understand what it means to talk about those levels. Why? Because immediately when we grasp the 50th gate, another 49 gates open up in front of us. Why? Because the 50th gate is the secret of true nullification in the face of the infinite. And this is something that is above ten tvachim, and we can't reach there. To the extent that a person can never come to a place where they reach true nothingness. And there's always going to be a sense of self that separates us from the infinite. And this is what it means that we don't go up beyond ten tvachim, that we can't grasp Hakadosh Baruch Hu, nor does Hakadosh Baruch Hu descend below ten tvachim. Because there will always remain ten tvachim that hint to the fact that we're human. And finally, Belashan Hakabbalah, the Rebbe says in the language of Kabbalah, who could the the Gabe Kava or in so. This is what we mean when we talk about the descent of the ray of infinite light that returns back into the void after the tzimtzum. She'ein yored hakava tzayf ha'igl. That in truth, the ray of infinite light does not descend to the bottom of the void. Why? Ki im haya yored hakav haya kol nisbatel. Because if the ray of infinite light descended down to the bottom of that void, then all of the voided nature of reality and the measurements that HaKadosh Baruch Hu desired to create the world with would have been negated because the infinite would be revealed above and below at once. And nevertheless, we have absolutely no access to connect to that infinitude of HaKadosh Baruch Hu without the Kav, without the Torah, without Halacha, which means to say that a person can never reach a place where they say, I no longer need the Torah, I no longer need the mitzvahs, I no longer need to recognize I'm limited. Why? Because maybe I've reached perfection. No, no matter where I am, the Torah is still necessary. There's another level, and another level, and another level. And the ikr is to reach a place of bittal, a place where a person realizes that not only can I not reach perfection, but my avoida is within the imperfection itself. And Ba'ez Hashem, these teachings of the Rebbe should shine light a little bit on the Avoidah of Elul, that the Avoidah of Elul is not to become perfect again, but it's the Avoidah of accepting the fact that we can't be perfect and accepting the fact that ultimately all we can do is try and try again and to begin again to the point where we reach the Shah Hanun only to come to realize that there's another 50 gates and another 50 gates. Ad Ein Sof, Ba'ez Hashem.